Hey, everybody, and welcome to the 50th episode of the Foundation First Fitness Show. Today, we've got Cam Charbonneau coming back on for her second time on this show. We are going to break down some mental skills uh, questions. I'm going to go through some mental skills stuff, get some tips on that. I know a lot of my younger athletes that probably sometimes I know they listen to this podcast will definitely be interested in this. This is a really interesting one because I think it may tie into other athletes as well, but uh Let's get right into it. So, Cam, thank you for being here again today. My pleasure. Um, so, I think I wanted to kick things off because I know last time we basically spoke about skills that someone could do if they were struggling with uh, any type of goal setting, and I think it was very broad. I wanted to mm-hmm. go a little bit more narrow today. Um, and one of the things I really wanted to talk about, because I do deal with a lot of younger athletes, so not just pro athletes, but a little bit younger. Did you get engaged? Yes. Since last time? Yeah. How did I not see that? You walked, you've been you. here. I don't know. Yeah, but how have I not <laughs> seen that in like the last like 45 minutes that you've been here? The like thing, I was just staring at it. I'm like, what is that sparkly? Did you get, so congratulations yeah, on that. You, when did you guys get engaged? Uh, in June, in Greece, when we were away. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. <laughs> so when's the wedding? Don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll just. I'll let ex- you know. All right. Awesome. <laughs> no. Thanks. Um, so. In terms of now, I can't just not stare at it because I was like, I don't know why it happened. Like, I see it, so I'm just like, um, what for a younger athlete? What is something that they should be focusing on in terms of the mental skills aspect? So, what I've noticed um, with any athlete or any person is the first thing that we need to tackle is self awareness, because we can't fix anything um, if we're not aware what to fix. Let's mm-hmm. say so, especially with younger. People are younger athletes. Their self awareness isn't as developed as um, older people or older athletes. So, I think it's important for to get younger athletes to start reflecting on perhaps good performances, bad performances, what they need to start doing to keep good things consistent, what they need to do to um, fix skills or techniques in order to improve. And these are not things that that younger athletes will automatically think about. Right? They're just, they'll just probably go to practice, go with the flow, maybe be more negative because they had a bad practice or feel really good because they had a good practice, but it's very rare that they reflect on the why. Okay. So what I get my athletes to do that through um, goal setting or specific reflection documents or even writing a journal mm-hmm. or nowadays you know, with the phone, uh, maybe it's about writing voice notes, but just reflecting right after the practice or competition, three things that went well and three things that need to be improved and why and then creating an action plan for the next <coughs> week of training and, and competition to address that um is it something do you think that that awareness does it have anything to do with maybe what the parents and coaches are telling them or is it just there's like a lack of or there's do you think there's maybe coaches telling them too much of something parents telling them one thing or is it them not informing them enough on thinking about these things i think it's just we're not informing them enough to to self-reflect um and i think we definitely have to work as a team parents coaches and the athlete to help the the younger athlete reflect properly mm-hmm. because it's it's a skill that you develop throughout your whole life right um so i think it's just about educating them about the importance of reflecting Um, and being self-aware of what's happening and why so that we can move forward and get better as an athlete and as a person what what's the major issue that can come about if they're not like doing any of this reflecting or doing any of this self-awareness right um well if you're not reflecting on why things are happening then it's harder to improve as as an athlete right how are you going to um improve a certain skill Mm -hmm. if you're not aware that it has to be improved or if you're not aware that this um I don't know. What's what's a skill that most of your hockey athletes, for example, need to, need to work skating. on? Skating. Skating. So let's okay. say the hockey players. Did, okay. did you just name an athlete? Did you just name a sport and I completely like... I right. said hockey. Okay, good. You said <laughs> hockey. Good. So hockey. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought you said like what... I thought you said a specific sport and it was like skating and you're like, I just said soccer players. So like, <laughs> hockey. Okay, so skating. So what specifically about skating usually? What's just their speed athlete? of skating. Let's say... Let's, let's talk about probably more their skating technique because okay. it's something that I can't help them with. Okay. But I'm more curious about that side because I think that okay. if I see something that I can help them with, it's easy for me to say, like, this okay. is where the issue is. 
Right. Actually, no, we'll do both. We'll do something okay. that I can't help them with, something they can... Okay, okay go. so if we talk about the speed of their skate, mm-hmm. skating, um, so let's say they have a game and they ref- we, he reflects after or she <coughs> reflects after and notices that, oh, I need to be faster. Mm-hmm. Okay, that, that's nice. That's step one of the reflection, but what now? So if you... If you have to skate faster, that means you have to do what? Who's in your support network now? Who's going to help you skate faster? What does that mean you have to do in the next few weeks? Does that mean they have to come see you and you need to look at their stride or, you know, strengths, weaknesses, point out some things they need to work on to whether it's agility or, Mm -hmm. you know, anything. And what are the two, three exercises they need to work on the next two weeks in order to improve their speed so that when they reflect again in, I don't know, in two weeks or so, that their speed will be faster or they'll notice any difference. So it's really breaking that down into an action plan, putting things into place to make sure they're improving what they need to. But if they don't reflect after and notice that, oh, my speed was not up to par, well, then we can't put those exercises into place because then the athlete wasn't aware that that was like, that was something that... Do you think that it's almost like they're delusional about it? Like, I think delusional is a little strong word. <laughs> I think I went a little extreme with that yeah. one, but do you think no, they're in... Just, uh, they're just not aware. They're just... They're going to practice, they're going with the flow, and I mean, they're having fun, right? Hopefully. But they're not... They're just not being told to reflect, okay. I think. And what happens most of the time with younger athletes is that the coaches will will make these decisions for them, right? Like, mm-hmm. okay, this athlete perhaps uh, needs to skate faster. And then I think they'll what will happen is they'll address that, but with the whole group, maybe address speed, um, whereas maybe it's not necessary to address speed with the whole group. So... Reflection on a personal level is important because obvi- we all know that in group settings we can't grow um, mm-hmm. to our full potential, right? Because it's not individualized for that person. Yeah, exactly. And I th- okay, so that I mean I understand that. I think that I think it makes sense to. I mean I know when I I probably trivialize speed because technically the entire team being faster is not a bad thing. Yeah. But yes. <laughs> I mean obviously being faster is not a bad thing. But individually I know there's there's definitely some players that. You know, even parents have come to me and spoken and said, like, you know, my son or daughter needs to be faster. Okay. What do we do to get them to that point? So I think, like, that makes sense. And I think it's, like, what I was getting at before when I was talking about, do you think it's the parents or do you feel like the parents may be the ones almost driving, like, the the self-reflection because they're, they're almost relaying what they see to their kid and saying, like, you need to be faster. Let's go see someone. I think that turns out to be pressure for the kid, not reflection. How so? Because, Explain, go into that because yeah, I think that's really because important. Because when, when the, the parent is saying, okay, you need to be faster, well, the kid, I don't think it's thinking about why. They're just like, oh, be like, I'm being attacked right now. Now there's pressure on me to be faster. So they're just And they're just trying they're just to going. be faster, but they don't necessarily know how or why. Mm-hmm. They're just trying to do something without having the tools to do so. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, from my experience, um, I mean, obviously everyone's different, um, but specifically with younger athletes, that whole thought process is not something that they're, um, it's not a habit for them to, to ask why and how. It's okay, I'm, my parent or coach is telling me to do something, so I'm going to try and do it, but maybe not because I feel like I'm, I'm being fine. attacked or, yeah, yeah. you know? Like they may, th- they may be thinking that they're totally fine, they don't understand why, so yeah. their, their level of, I guess, execution and... I guess the amount of effort they're putting into improving that skill is probably not going to be there to some right. extent. Yeah. Um, okay. So an athlete, let's say for, in regards to me, I come in and I say, okay, I see that someone's struggling for me. Let's say I'll look at an athlete, a younger athlete, the grand majority are all struggling with more or less the same two or three things. One okay. of those being core stability. Okay. How do we get them to understand that themselves and actually be self-aware that their course ability is not? Am I testing them and I'm like putting them through something that'll make them mm. fail a test? Am I like setting that benchmark for them or is it just? That's a tricky one because uh, I, I teach grown people about course ability, right? So it's like, how do you? <laughs> how do you tell it? It goes back to, yeah, exactly. Um, I would... Yeah, I think doing a baseline test with young athletes and telling them why you're doing it and the importance of the course stability is step one. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to use like scales to rate how they feel. So maybe asking them on 10, um, how do you... How do you feel your course stability yeah. is? 
to see if their awareness, like maybe before and after. Yes. So have them do it before, have them test post. Yeah, see do what some happens. exercises throughout the week, and then do a, the same test and say, yeah. okay, how do you feel now? Because it's um, easy when it's when you're skating. You it, like to be more self aware that your skating is not you're not fast enough is somewhat easy. Because yeah, you're always you'll see you're always you'll passing compare it, yourself to right. The it's rest. pretty easy. Like, oh, he's there. I'm not. What's yeah. you know? When you're here doing core stability, it's like, yeah, I, th- I think I'm doing it. Like, there's no one else that you're looking at going like, it's not like a race. It's yeah, but I'm doing it. But you don't know if you're doing it well. Exactly. You just know that you're doing yes. it. So, because that's kind of what my push is on a lot okay. of young players is do it properly. Like if you're going to do it, do it properly. If you're going to do it five times, do it five times perfectly. Don't yeah. do it 15 times, yeah. five times perfectly, 10 times poorly. Cause then it, those 10 times are useless. Yeah. Um, what could someone be doing on, what should someone be doing? What are tips that you can give to a young athlete to be more, to, it's, I know I'm, I'm asking, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but to be more self-aware and yeah. what kind of action plan should they be taking from there? Right. Um, I, I learned this thing in, called a highlight journal from a uh, professor that I had who, who uh, advocates positive living skills. And basically a highlight journal is talking about three positives at the end of your day. Okay. So I, using that idea, mm-hmm. I ask athletes to reflect on three things. Like I said previously, right after the training, it has to be right after, or they're going to forget three mm-hmm. things that they have to improve. Um, and then three things that went well always important to finish with the positive so in terms of action plan when they list those three things or let's say maybe one thing that they Mm -hmm. need to improve for tomorrow they need to ask themselves okay so i didn't skate fast enough today now what can i do tomorrow to skate faster maybe it's about implementing cues and this is where the mental skills come in even more it's um being aware in that moment being aware in that moment yeah which is definitely not in anyone's habits so right um, maybe it's putting in the cues, okay, uh, str- I don't know, I don't skate. So what are some cues that would... <laughs> Kick back you? harder, yeah, sure. get lower. Yeah, so that person needs to reflect specifically on cues that would help them skate faster and implement that tomorrow. And remember to implement those cues tomorrow. Okay. Usually what helps is when you have communication with your coach, well, the coach could remind you to do it. Otherwise, I have people write it uh, down on paper. Say this is your, and it comes down to goal setting. This is your action plan or goals for tomorrow, considering your reflection today. Bring this paper with you, put it in your bag with your equipment so that when you're at practice, you're looking at it right before so that you go on the ice with intention. Okay. So you're setting yourself up for that success. Exactly. You're not just going with the flow. And yes, it's important to have fun and just go with it sometimes. But if you want to develop as a player and get, you know, to a higher level, it's important to set goals and work on specific skills every opportunity that you get. Okay. Should they be narrowing their thought process down? Should they be trying to come as narrow as possible with that? Like as specific as they possibly can with their skill? Yes. And same thing because it's goal setting and the more specific you are, the more likely you'll be, you'll follow through because you know exactly what to do. Right. Because if I'm just going to be like, I'm going to skate faster tomorrow. Okay. Like, how are you doing that? Like you can't, I mean, depending on your level of sk- of self-reflection and awareness and how many times you you have experience actually trying to skate faster maybe you'll know exactly what to do but as a young athlete you probably won't know um so it's important to talk with your coach and well what age are we talking about here literally my like it's a pretty sizable spread okay. like let's say 12 to 18 okay so maybe at like 18 you might have a better idea of some and of cues and things you you have to do but you I spent a little bit more time kind of like in your own head thinking about those things yeah. i think by 18 yeah exactly whereas when you're younger i think you have to have help with a with your coach or parent um to get feedback to help you move forward or sometimes it's about even looking at video if we talk about feedback right mm-hmm. i don't know if young kids are doing that I think they do. I know at uh, like 15, I think, 14, 15, they start, they start doing video. Okay. Because a lot of their games are recorded. It's, I think it's fairly recent. I don't remember like okay. when I was playing, but I wasn't very good. But I mean, when I was playing, no one right. was recording. I mean, my dad was, but it was different. Yeah. So for example, this kid could be watching the video alone at home after a game and picking out all the things that not just need, they need to improve, very important, but what went well as well. And 
picking those things, writing it down on paper and saying, and at the same time, giving himself or herself cues to implement for the next Mm -hmm. practice, because we want to implement strategies at practice, not in games, because they usually won't work, right? You always want to practice it just like any other skill. Less stress, more just... Well, it doesn't make sense to implement a new strategy in a game situation, because you'll probably forget about it, and you don't know if it will work. And with mental skills, it's always trial and error, because everyone's different, right? So... Um, when I talk about cues, there's two types of cues. So there's motivational and technical. So for example, um, let's say you made a mistake on the ice. Mm -hmm. Most people will start getting into this negative spiral. So you're either the person that tells yourself, yes, I can do this, keep going. Or you focus more on technical cues like uh, longer stride or quicker pass, but more technical cues, right? So you're usually one or the other, maybe both. So self-awareness, First, realizing what type of person are you, what kind of cues work for you, Mm -hmm. and then implementing those to your training, everyday life, because mental skills could be transferred to any aspect of life. And then once you find out what works, what cues work for you in practice, then you're putting them into the the game. Okay. Makes sense. Good. Where can someone, if someone wants to get in contact with you to learn more about mental skills, where can they reach you? Yeah, they could check out my Instagram, cam, C-A-M dot Sharb. So C-A-M dot C-H-A-R-B or email me, Camille dot Charbonneau 7 at gmail.com. Awesome. Perfect. Guys, listen, tons of information. Start using it right away. And until that next time, guys, Kim, sorry, thank you for being here today. Wow, completely ignored you and brushed you off. It was the engagement ring, threw me off. I had to get you back. Um, Kim, thank you again for being here. Hopefully we will get you on because I think like my, as you were talking, my mind was just like, we've got yeah, 17 sure. different things I want to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but if ever you guys are interested, I'm going to put all her information in the description on the podcast, YouTube. Uh, probably on Facebook too. And uh, until next time, guys, keep building that foundation. Yeah.